Let's just be a creaky old house. Excuse me, are you guys open? Oh yes, yes, welcome, please, come in. Go ahead and take a seat anywhere you'd like. As you can see, there are plenty available. So how's business? Well, that all depends on how much you're looking to spend tonight. I had kind of hoped the grand opening would be a little bit more, well, grand. Well, I'm sure things will pick up eventually. Let me grab you a menu. Do you have brandy? I do. But I don't need a menu. So, what brings you out tonight? Well, I've been by this place many times, but it's always been closed up and empty. Ah? Uh -huh. This is actually the first time I've been inside. And what do you think? It's about what I expected. But the real reason I came here was because of my great-grandfather. Oh, and why is that? He killed a man here long ago. Oh. How long ago? It was back in the Civil War. Do you know what happened? I do. Uh, do you have a few minutes? I think I can spare a few. Have a seat. Join me. Bring that bottle, too. Back in the uh, Civil War, this town of Harper's Ferry was known for its three W's. Three W's? Weapons, whiskey... Ah, and women? Something like that. Okay. Mind if I smoke? I don't think anyone else is going to complain. Anyway, this small town changed hands about a dozen times during the course of the war. It had two hot commodities. One was the railroad, which would allow for transportation of troops and supplies. Two was the weapons arsenal. At that time, Harper's Ferry was one of only two places in America where weapons were made. And the South desperately needed weapons. Excuse me, sir. This is the boy I was telling you about? You live around here, boy? Yes, sir, all my life. You know Harper's Ferry? Better than you, I'd say. Don't get fresh with me, boy. You familiar with the armory? Of course. Good. What I'd like you to do is take a little stroll through town, head for the armory, and tell me how many rifles they have there. What's in it for me? What do you want? Money. And none of that Confederate stuff, neither. That ain't fit to wipe your backside with. <clears throat> Don't let Bobby Lee hear you say that, boy. Northern greenbacks, or I ain't doing it. Fine. But I need you to give me the count on the rifles and the number of troops stationed there. I need those weapons, and I need to know how many men I'm gonna need to take them. Yes, sir. And one more thing, don't get caught. You know what they do with spies around here? They hang them from a tall tree with a short rope. I can take care of myself. Yeehaw, Captain! Ain't she a beaut? You ever fire that thing? That squirrels. Shooting squirrels is a lot different than shooting a man. Now, get out of here. And if your info's good, I'll make sure you get your greenbacks. Shooting squirrels? So, how do you know all this? Uh, the stories were passed down through my family. Also, he wrote to his wife about it. And this letter here, check it out. Wow. Uh, I thought you might like a copy of it since it was actually written in this building. Who are you writing to? To my wife in Vermont. Are you telling her about me? No, love. I figured I would leave that out. After all, you're probably not writing to your husband about me. Of course not. You're a damn Yankee. <laughs> My dearest Gloria, how I do wish for the warmth of your companionship, but thank God Almighty that you are safely nestled with kith and kin in Montpelier 
and far from the town in which I am currently garrisoned. There is such an obvious secessionist sentiment here that nobody can be trusted. Further, the enemy has again ventured toward us through the valley. As a result, the general has declared habeas corpus and has imposed a strict curfew. This at least provides our men some respite at night as there are now only three kinds of people on the streets after dark. Spies, prostitutes, and fools. Well, thank you very much, ma'am. You sure know how to show a fella a good time. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry. Hey, fella, I think what you're looking for is right over there. Oh, no thanks. I'll suit yourself. Why, hello there. Aren't you a handsome one? Looking for some company? Huh. Not tonight, ma'am. Why not? I'll set your lantern on fire. <laughs> Hey, where are you going? I don't bite, unless of course you want me to. I'll make it a night you'll remember forever. <laughs> Fools notwithstanding, this town, its location, and its industry is of strategic importance. Troop movements, the railroads, and the armory in particular with its shipments of weapons are continually under surveillance. Halt! And everyone here is a potential spy. Men, women, hey, even the halt. local youth are eyes halt. for the rebels. You, halt. you go to arms! You cannot possibly appreciate to what extreme these people are willing to go to gather information. Nothing is hidden. Nothing is secure. Sounds like your great-grandfather was a little bit disgruntled. I'd agree with that. Uh, also, here's an old tin-type photograph of my great-grandfather. I think that was taken shortly after the war. Oh, wow. Well, I think I've taken up enough of your time. You should cover it for the bill. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't break this. Keep the change. Just because my great-grandfather was a mean old bastard doesn't mean I have to be one, too. Thank you. Good luck with your business. Thanks. Hello? 